Hello and welcome to my millinery shorts video series in which I'm looking at a variety of millinery techniques. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and in this video I will be wiring a hat. Just remember, this is my preferred method, there is no right or wrong way, just whatever works for you. Let's gather the materials and get started. For a comprehensive list of tools and materials, as well as some suggested suppliers, please see the description box below. Using pliers, I'm going to start by taking out all the pins that are holding the buckram over the block. Then I need to make sure that the base of my hat is nice and flat, so I'm going to mark a cutting line using a sewing gauge. Here I'm cutting off about one centimeter, but I could have chosen to not bother measuring and follow the base of the block. I'm also going to mark the front and back. This is super important so that later I know exactly how the finished hat should sit on my head. The next step is peeling the hat off the block. This one was really stuck, so I'm using a bit of bendy plastic to scoop in between the cling film and the block to loosen it up. I'm making my way around the whole block a little bit at a time as I don't want to tug too hard on one side and deform my hat shape. Now that it's finally off, I'm going to use some kitchen scissors to cut along my marked line. Let's talk about wires. There are two options. I can either use millinery wire, which is wire covered in cotton threads, and the one I have is one millimeter thick. Or I can use galvanized wire. This is a sprung wire that won't rust. The one I've got is 1.6 millimeters thick. Which one to use is just up to personal preference. In small hats, I prefer to use the galvanized wire because I can join it more seamlessly using a ferrule. More on that later. However, for larger hats with brims, I prefer to use the lighter and softer millinery wire. Incidentally, look at what happens to my hat form when I take it off the block. It's all misshapen. This is normal, but it does mean that I don't want to be taking shapes off a block before I'm ready to wire them immediately. I'll start by demonstrating a wire join for the millinery wire. First, I'll need to get my tape measure to measure around my block. This will give me the length of wire I need, to which I will add 5 cm extra for an overlap. When measuring the wire, measure the inside of the wire curve. Mark the wire with a pencil, then clamp down with the wire cutters for a smooth cut. Next, I'll join my wire with the 5cm overlap and hold it in place with some mini clothes pegs. I'm using a double threaded needle with a knot joining the ends of the thread. Here's how I do a super quick knot. Wrap the thread around the index finger. Clamp down and roll it between that finger and my thumb. Hold it tight and pull it through. Sew the wires together, starting in the middle of the join. Because I'm using a double thread, I loop the thread through itself to secure the middle of the join. Then I wrap the threads around the wires going in one direction. Once I get to the end of the join, I loop it over a couple of times to secure that end and work my way back towards and then past the middle. Now 
Now that I'm back where I started, I can secure the thread with more loops and several knots. The threads should make a pretty cross pattern over the wires. And now the galvanized wire join. I'll measure the wire the same way as I did before and cut with the wire cutters, although this time no need for an overlap as I'm going to use a ferrule to do the join. It magically slots in. This is so much faster than the sewing. As I was joining the wire, I noticed that it was slightly misshapen and not a flat circle. This can also happen with the millinery wire. It's always best to try to flatten the wire before sewing it to the hat shape. To do this, put the wire onto a flat surface, take notice of where the imperfections are and balance them out. As I'm doing this, I'm also going to shape the wire into an oval to match the shape of my block. Then fix the wire onto the hat shape using the mini clothes pegs. To be super accurate, I could have marked quarters on the wire and on the hat and fixed the wire to the hat exactly in those places. But as my hat is small, I'm going to eyeball it. If it was a massive brim, I would have measured and marked it out. If I was sewing in the millinery wire, I would have matched the center of the join with the center back of the hat. With the ferrule joined galvanized wire, I prefer to have the join off center towards the back of the hat. To sew the wire in place, I would normally use white thread, but to demonstrate, I'm going to use red as it shows up better on video. I'm using a single threaded needle with a knot in the end. The stitch I use is called a blanket stitch, maybe also a buttonhole stitch. Whatever it is called, it goes like this. Stick the needle from the inside of the buckram to the outside, then before pulling the thread through, hook the needle through the loop, then pull through, travel and do the same. To tie off the thread, make a loop and hook the needle through three times, then pull through. This should give a good tight knot. Almost done. The last stage is to cover the wire with some bias binding. This is done to soften the edges of the hat so that it doesn't feel harsh against the head to wear. Think of it like extra padding for comfort. I'm using two centimeter cotton bias binding. I want to make sure that my bias binding join marks the center back of my hat, so I'm starting the sewing a little bit over where the center back is. I'm going to fold it over so I can stitch both sides at the same time with a single thread. Then sew it into place using stab stitches. To do this, poke the needle through from the inside, travel about 2mm backwards on the outside, then travel forwards about 2cm on the inside, and repeat. To finish the binding, I'm going to stitch all the way up to where I started, then make sure that there is a little bit extra to fold it under itself, making that fold exactly at the centre back of the hat. All done! You can see the stab stitches are tiny and almost invisible on the right side of the hat, and the longer travelling stitches are on the inside. The binding join matches the centre back exactly. This is now a wired buckram hat form that is ready to be covered in fabric and trimmed. Yeah. Hello! No, we'll start that again. That was too many series in one go. Multiple thimbles today. 